Okay, so we have to ask the question again, that which most people have seen. Why would there be no light? A looking a magnet underneath the ferrule cell. I just got done showing you the image. Either side of any magnet is not one spin of magnetism and the other side another. It doesn't work that way. It's impossible. It can't work that way. Every quote-unquote side or pole or magnet, I just got done showing you, the ferrule cell looks exactly like this. Except, of course, it'd be larger on this one. We have... This is not magnetism here. Magnetism on this magnet only exists right here. We do have an intermediate zone right here. But the point right here, you can see it underneath every ferrule cell, underneath magnetic viewing film. Okay. Point of dielectric acceleration. Point of centripetal convergence. Point of centrifugal divergence. Okay. Simplex field pressure mediation. No different than this. No different. Actually, if this water was not on top of the magnet, that styrofoam would go off to the side. <laughs> but why? Now, these are just iron filings. Why do you think these iron filings will stand up tall like sequoia trees? Let's get closer. Right to the centrifugal edge. This zone, as the filings are showing you, is the only point where magnetism exists. There is an intermediate zone here, but the pressure is maximum right here. This is the point, which by the way, magnetism, which is the loss of inertia, or as Faraday called it, the dielectric field, magnetism is the loss of inertia. It follows the Poincaré disk model. P-O-I-N-C-A-R-E disk model. Poincaré. Hanley Poincaré. Okay? Actually, the guy that Einstein stole most of his stuff from. You know, he didn't come up with the stuff himself. But he stole a lot of stuff from Hanley Poincaré. So. so, what's the deal? You saw underneath the ferro cell this exact pattern. The white spots would be the places where you saw the light. The dark spots would be the places you didn't see the light. So the question becomes is, okay, I recognize the pattern. We understand it's the simplest way that field pressure mediations can mediate themselves out. Like if you had one locus where you would have a fountain and a drain occupying the same space. How would they mediate out their pressures? Just like this. Exactly like this. So why, with those iron filings, in this presence of a very strong magnetic field with this gigantic magnet, why would they stand up? Why wouldn't they lay completely flat, close to the magnet as possible? Answer the question. For the same reason that you can see this pattern underneath the ferrule cell of light and no light, but at the center, it'd be completely black. No light at all. So it'd be actually the inverse of this. Where you see the white, it'd be... Uh, black, and we see the black, it would be white. This is the same pattern you saw underneath the ferro cell. The exact same pattern. This is the interlacing of Mother Nature's field pressures. This, the hypertrochoid. This, by the way, if you're able to see it in three dimensions, would be the hyperboloid. Which, this also follows the golden ratio, by the way, in absolute perfection. In the center of which, an inverse image would be the hyperboloid. Okay, the torus and the hyperboloid. It's a reciprocating processional hyperboloid. You want to see what magnetic uh, quote unquote repulsion looks like? It looks exactly like this. This would be two quote unquote light poles trying to push them together. This is exactly what the field pressure mediation would look like. Exactly like this. Two of them coming together. Mother Nature is really, really simple. The entire universe works off this principle. 100% of the visible universe is based on magnetism and magnetism only. The inner atomic diameter of every atom in picometers is not empty space. It's magnetodielectricity. What do you think the air in the balloon, if you will, of every atom is? It's not nothing. It's magnetodielectricity. So, answer me the question. Why and how does this work? Got another ball magnet. Okay, should be attracted to this right here. Yeah, look, it's pointing right at the center. 
But if I get it closer, right to the edge. And let go to the edge. I let go right to the edge. It's the exact same thing as this. Kind of like your washing machine. Centrifugal pressure pushing everything to the edge. It's the same thing. You think this is a magnet, and you're right, but you don't know what a magnet is. Every quote-unquote pole has two zones, and they're always interlacing with each other. Okay. You can, it's demonstrably measurable with a Gauss meter. Very, very strong here. Centripetal convergence, extremely strong out here. Centrifugal divergence. Everything out here is being whipped out. Just like this magnet being whipped out. Let go and whoosh, whoosh, being whipped out. Why doesn't it land here? Because this is a magnet. The same reason why the universe's most diamagnetic element, bismuth, which is heavier than lead, by the way, when you actually pass it over this enormous magnet, you'll feel a speed bump here, but you'll actually feel a point of attraction right here. It'll actually dip down. It'll go whoop down and then up again. Well, that makes no sense. This is a gigantic, powerful magnet. Why would this be attracted right here? That You can feel it. Oh, it's so demonstrable. Why would it be? It's just like there's a little vortex of, uh, of negative pressure, which is exactly what it is. A vortex of negative pressure right here. As you pass over it, it's dipping right into it. Well, that makes no sense. This is a gigantic magnet, and this is the, the universe's most diamagnetic element. The magnetic permeability on this is the highest, which means it hates magnetism, it's not magnetic. This is also the same reason why superconductivity is a lie. Yttrium barium copper oxide discs, for example, are not superconductors. Rather, when they're chilled, they become super low magnetic permeability. They obtain super low magnetic permeability. Literally, they become super shields for magnetic permeability. So the notion of superconductivity is a lie. Of course, you can call it whatever the hell you want, but it's not superconductivity. It is ultra, ultra low magnetic permeability. When something uh, like yttrium barium copper oxide becomes super chilled, it is basically like sealing off the pores of uh, the uh, of the of the uh, of the ceramic uh, compound to magnetic permeability. It becomes literally a super shield against magnetic permeability. This is the universe's most diamagnetic element, bismuth. Why is it attracted to the center here? For the exact same reason that this is repulsed away from the center. This is another little yttrium, uh, excuse me, this is a little neodymium iron boron uh, spherical ball. The same reason that this jumps out here is the same reason, pay attention, that this is attracted to the center. Get that? Pause it if you want. Think about it a second. This makes no sense. And you'll find no explanation for this in any book on magnetism. I got them all. I got every book on magnetism. They're all full of shit. All of them. They don't know. But Mother Nature is really simple. And I know what magnetism is. I know how it works. I know what it is. It's demonstrable. It's logical. It's sensible. It is so simplex. It is, it is as hardcore uh, difficult as saying uh, you let go of an apple and it'll fall to the earth. That's how complex it is. Of course, humans still haven't figured out what gravity is. Gravity is no different than dielectric acceleration. There's no autonomous uh, field modality known as gravity. There's no difference between gravity and that which we call magnetic acceleration. The only difference is coherency. You understand this? The same reason this magnet will jump out to the side here is the same reason why the most diamagnetic element in the universe wants to jump to the center. Do you understand that? And it's also the exact same damn reason why once I can get it here the exact same damn reason why these iron filings stand up. What, why are they standing up like Christmas trees? It's the exact same reason why when I get closer whoop, if you understand that, then you'll understand. You'll be the first human beings on Earth to understand the universe's most elemental 
field principle, magnetism. Okay? Every side of every magnet looks exactly like this in field pressure mediation. Okay? Follows the golden ratio, follows field pressure mediation. It's interlacing patterns of additive convergence or additive divergence. As I showed you underneath the ferro cell, where you see additive divergence, you will see the light. Where you see additive convergence, you will see nothing. <clears throat> you saw it here first. I hope you like this. It's irrefutable. It's undeniable. And whatever you think of me, I can assure you of one thing. I am the first and only person on Earth to completely figure out what magnetism is, how it works. It's all perfect. It's all perfectly simple. It's not very simple to explain, but it's logical, it's simplex, it's undeniable, it's irrefutable, and everything in the universe works this way. Because Mother Nature only has two principles, force and motion, and inertia and acceleration. And she's not a crazy cross-eyed uh, hooker on crack with a calculator. She's uh, like a, a hairy armpit chick girl wearing a, uh, a tunic and uh, no sandals, barefoot, you know, muddy feet. She only understands two things. She don't have a calculator. This is how modern physics thinks that Mother Nature, she's sitting there with a calculator. Beep, 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 you know, ridiculous. Bullshit. It's as simple as this. Force in motion, inertia acceleration. Divergence, convergence. Centripetal, convergence. Centrifugal, divergence. Mother Nature doesn't have a calculator. She doesn't even have shoes. She's a hairy armpit chick, hippie chick with her hair in a bun and uh, naked except for a tunic yeah this is a bit of exaggeration I know for sake of humor um, you know we, we think the universe is so comp it's simple it's not simplex but it is simple so simple field pressure mediation look at this magnetic attraction what's well, not magnetic attraction it's dielectric convergence Oh, magnetic uh, repulsion. No. <laughs> it's not magnetic repulsion. This is force in motion. This is dielectric counter-voidance, which sounds too complicated for most people. Let's just call it force in motion, okay? Oh, look. Every time we look at this, we see polarity. Oh, polarity. That's right. The loss of inertia is, as Faraday called it, the dielectric field but it's force in motion. It's this. And this is exactly what it looks like. Using simplex more uh, patterns like this. This is the exact same pattern you saw underneath the ferro cell. The hypertrochoid. This is how all field pressure mediations are worked out. It can't even exist any other way. Anything more complicated than this then Mother Nature becomes a cross-eyed hooker on crack with a calculator. Exactly as quantum mechanics. Uh, I mean, even these same idiots will tell you that if you think you understand quantum mechanics, then uh, you must be right. They will even tell you that the very religion that they preach, the cult of quantum, they will tell you that if you think you understand it, then you really don't. But they don't say that about you. They say that about themselves. The co-founder of the cult of quantum mechanics, Feynman, the moron, the idiot, the dumbass, himself said, I think it's reasonable to say that nobody understands quantum mechanics. He wasn't talking about people. He was talking about himself and the rest of them. It's bullshit. It's a cult of particles. Everything is fields, and fields are not particles. Okay? Fields are not particles. You've been watching too much Star Trek, where they're sending out graviton particles and muon particles and uh, 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 reverse time part. You've been watching too much Star Trek. Star Wars, Star Trek. You know, these uh, particle cannons and turn on the, uh, the graviton accelerator. <laughs> it's a cult of particles. It's ancient Greek atomism rehashed. The universe doesn't work that way. Everything is fields, and fields are not particles. And the most fundamental principle, most fundamental field in the universe is magnetism. And there's not a single physicist on Earth that you can ask and say, why is the universe's most diamagnetic element attracted to the center of this magnet and another magnet 
does not want to be at the center of this magnet, but rather whoosh, jumps out here. We've got two zones that are always interlacing on either side of any magnet. Okay. The same reason this bismuth wants to sit right here in the center, and the same reason this magnet wants to jump out here to the centrifugal edge, are one and the same thing. Same principle. It's not difficult, but people don't understand it. But I do. So, you saw it here first. Thanks for watching. This is the end of the two-part series. If you like this video and drop me a buck or two, go tell me to jump off a cliff. But whatever you say... I'm right, and uh, there's nothing you, you know, there's <laughs> I'm right on this, and there's nothing you got to say uh, in refutation of it, because it's not possible. It can't even exist any other way. Anything else that you want to explain, as far as understanding magnetism, you're going to start have to introduce leprechauns and unicorns and nonsensical particle BS, which is insane, absurd, nonsensical twaddle, because Mother Nature doesn't work that way. Nature doesn't work that way. It's impossible. It can only exist this way. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.